I started journaling consistently back in 2018. So six years ago. It was the year I turned 30 and started taking City Girl Savings seriously. It was the year I decided I eventually wanted to run City Girl Savings full-time. I took an online course that required me to journal, and I've never stopped since. The benefits that have come over time through consistent journaling are truly amazing. I eventually was able to quit my corporate job and run City Girl Savings full-time. I was able to see the growth in my thought patterns over time, and I'm able to look back on old journal entries and feel pride and gratitude. In this episode, I'm sharing seven reasons to start journaling on a regular basis, as well as a few journal prompts to get you started. Hey there, I'm Rhea Reeves, and over a decade ago, I turned my life around through budgeting. I went from being an overspender deep in credit card debt to being the founder and full-time money coach of City Girl Savings. Now, I help women work towards their dream life and tap into their financial power one budget at a time. I fully believe you can live a life you love with a budget and I'm living proof. The weekly City Girl Savings podcast focuses on the intersection of money and the City Girl lifestyle. Join me every week along with some special guests as I share my experiences, advice, and guidance on navigating life and money as an experience-loving millennial. I think the most important and probably impactful reason to start journaling consistently is because when you do, you become more self-aware. The more you journal, the more you learn about yourself, whether that's in the moment or going back to read old journal entries from years back. And the more you learn about yourself, the more self-aware you become. You understand your insecurities, you understand your triggers, your emotions, and your strengths and opportunities better. It's almost like you get to have a conversation with yourself or almost like a therapy session with yourself, which is kind of nice. And I think the more that we can separate ourselves from our consciousness, the better understanding we're going to have of ourselves overall. And I totally get if this sounds like a foreign concept, but it is a real thing. I highly recommend you read The Power of Now. I'll link to it in the show notes. It will help you understand mindfulness and consciousness on a whole different level. I read it around 2018 and it totally changed the game for me. Another reason to start journaling on a regular basis is when you do, you have a space for releasing any fears, anxieties, traumas. It's such a therapeutic way to get those things kind of out of your brain and onto paper. So if you struggle with holding things in, if you bottle up your emotions and deal with them later, I think journaling can be such a great form of release for you and those emotions so they don't come out at an unfortunate time. And I think we've all been there, right? We just say, oh, I'll deal with that later or it's not that big of a deal. And those emotions kind of get buried deep inside until one day we explode and we regret it. Journaling can help you avoid those situations. And I'm 100% speaking from my own experience. I remember vividly having a panic attack and instead of taking it out on my boyfriend, who was the one who triggered the attack, I journaled everything I was feeling. And I was able to read that while my boyfriend may have triggered the panic, there was a lot of fear and insecurity that really came up as a result. And had I not journaled, I would have caused a terrible fight with my partner and maybe done unnecessary things. I think self-sabotage is real. And if we don't have a way of kind of releasing those things, especially if they're insecurities and fears and anxieties, we may do unnecessary damage and that's no good. So journaling can be such a great resource for releasing those fears, those insecurities, the traumas, panic, anxiety, or just general emotions. And I'm not saying to use journaling as a way to avoid conflict, but journaling can help you identify the true issue before you do say something that you may regret. 
The next reason to start journaling is you can see the growth over time. And I know I mentioned this earlier, but I want to spend some time here because this has actually been very impactful for me. One benefit of journaling is the fact that you can go back through your old journal entries and see your own change and growth over time. So if you are feeling like you're not moving anywhere or you're not growing, you're not leveling up, you can go back to those old journal entries and just see the difference. When I'm feeling a certain way, I like to look at old journal entries and I'm kind of weird with it. (laughs) If I am journaling on December 21st, 2023, I will go back and look at December 21st, 2022, and then December 21st, 2021. And I will just go all the way back in time and kind of see where I was on that specific day each year. It's kind of crazy, but it does remind me that I have come a long way. And it also reminds me that the problems that I'm facing now can be solved because All of my problems in the past had been solved. The things that I would stress over and journal about and have fears and anxieties about all got resolved. So it's such a confidence boost to see that there is change and growth over time. And I think another way to see growth over time with journaling is when you journal about your goals. It's so, so liberating for me to go back to old journal entries and see the goals that I was working on back then and how they differ from the goals that I have now. I can clearly and vividly see that new levels have been achieved over time. And that gives me some motivation and some confidence to continue setting goals and working towards new levels. Next reason to start journaling consistently is you can manifest a life you love. And I feel like this goes hand in hand with When you journal about your goals, but when you take the time to journal out your goals, not just with the intention of seeing your growth over time, but with the intention of putting into the universe what you want to achieve, the things that you want, your dream life, the things that matter most to you, the things that would make you most happy. When you take the time to journal those things out, you can see how they manifest over time, especially if they are things that truly matter to you. I think journaling can be a great way to create a life you love. You know, you spend your time thinking about what you want and what it means to you. And then you will see your day-to-day actions and decisions start aligning with the things that you want. It's a very magical experience, but I know depending on where you're at in your situation, you may be feeling like there is no way out, right? But I would encourage you to let journaling be your escape, right? And and kind of get out of your head that, oh, this will never happen for me or this isn't real or I'm being delusional. Don't go into it with that mindset. Instead, go into it with the mindset of, this is what I truly want. And take it a step further by writing it in a way as if you already have it. So one thing that I like to do when I journal every now and then, I don't do this all the time, but like I said, if I'm journaling on a specific date and I would you know, look at that specific date for past journal entries, I also like to journal as if the date was, let's say three years in the future. So if I'm journaling on October 5th, 2024, then... I would date it October 5th, 2027. And I would write a journal entry as if I was three years in the future and listing all the things I want and stuff. So that's another way to journal as if you already have something and you just never know what can happen along the way. Another reason to start journaling is journaling helps you stay focused. It helps you keep your eyes on the prize specifically with like the goals you have and the things you want. So when you do take the time to journal out your goals and your dream life and the things that you want, you keep those things top of mind. And I truly believe that keeping your goals front and center really allows you to constantly remember and remind yourself what you're working towards. And I think that constant reminder is also what helps 
shape your day-to-day actions and decisions to helping you reach the goal, right? So if the goal is kind of written on a post-it note tucked in your drawer and you never see it, you may not act and do things to help you reach that goal. But if you see your goal every day or you journal about your goal daily, you may do things on a day-to-day basis that help you reach the goal. So I think as long as your goals matter to you, you will do the things that you need to do to achieve those goals, but journal on them so that you keep them top of mind because it can make a huge difference. Are you loving this episode so far? Well, the money and life level up conversations never end in the City Girl Savings community. Visit citygirlsavings.com for instant access to resources that help you budget, level up your money mindset, and so much more. And make sure you stay up to date with CGS by following us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, all at City Girl Savings. And then the final reason to start journaling consistently is journaling is a free form of self-care. I know I mentioned earlier, it's kind of like therapy with yourself, which I think is great. And maybe not as great as with an actual therapist, but it is a form of self-care and it is completely free. And because journaling has so many benefits to your feelings and your life, it's a great way to practice self-care without spending any money. I think outside of maybe purchasing a notebook or hopefully you already have a laptop, like there's really no cost involved with this form of self-care. And I do believe that the true and lasting benefits that come from journaling consistently will foster a a self-love and an inner peace and a growing within yourself. So if you want to practice self-care and get all of the benefits you can from journaling, make sure you make it a part of your daily routine. You can check out episode 58, my daily morning routine for boosting productivity. You'll learn all about my morning routine and how you know journaling plays a role in that. I'll make sure to link to it in the show notes. But Regardless if you are a morning person or an evening person, journaling doesn't have to be at the start of the day, at the end of the day. It just needs to be done daily. So whatever works for you, however you can add journaling into your day so that you can start seeing the benefits from it, I strongly suggest you do. Find what works for you. It doesn't have to be a set schedule. Just make sure that you make time for it. Now, I know we talked about journaling has the benefit of you being able to see your growth over time. But I want to kind of pull the thread through on that because in addition to leveraging journaling to see your growth over time, you can also leverage journaling to re-experience past memories. And this is definitely a plus to journaling on a consistent basis. I know I've mentioned looking back on past journal entries quite a bit in today's episode, but It's such an important benefit. And I love to take myself back to certain memories and relive those experiences. In fact, I actually want to share an old journal entry with you that instantly takes me back to this day, place, time. Like I can picture it in my mind when I read this journal entry. So I'm going to read it to you. It is from 2020. It's Saturday morning and I'm sitting outside on the patio of my room at the Lighthouse Lodge and Cottages in Monterey, California. More specifically, Pacific Grove, California. The air is crisp because the sea is just yonder and the sun is bright. I have a sweater on in July. What a way to wake up. I had to make it a point to journal and get my affirmations out. I love vacation, even if it's exploring different parts of the United States. Wes is in the room, in bed. It feels good to sleep in and not have to worry about working out, though I would like to make sure I get some good activity in today. I realize when I'm not working out how much I enjoy it and how much my body needs it. I also need to make sure my diet is considered on this trip. I'm enjoying myself, but I don't want to have to undo a lot of bad decisions. The trip is going well so far. Wes and I landed in LA on Thursday and stayed the night in Woodland Hills. We hung out with his friend and his friend's family for dinner. Then yesterday, we left early and hit the road. We first ate breakfast and washed the car. Then we stopped in the Santa Ynez Mountains. Then stopped at Hearst Ranch Winery in San Simeon. 
It was facing the beach, so pretty. We stopped to use the bathroom in Big Sur and then made it to Monterey. I'm enjoying myself, as always, on vacation. So (laughs) that journal entry was a little corny, specifically when I said the sea is just yonder. But that whole entry just encapsulates how I was feeling when I was writing it. And I was feeling so blessed, grateful, happy to be in a new place. And I feel like it just radiated in my entry. And so my whole point is you can re-experience past memories and have all those feelings come back to you when you journal. And as you just heard, that journal entry was just a a recap of what I had been doing on this trip and how I was feeling. So journaling can be anything you want it to be. You can journal about anything you want. But how wonderful to relive specific happy memories. I think that's an important aspect of journaling. So I've talked about the reasons anyone should start journaling on a consistent basis. But if you are completely new to journaling, you don't know where to start, I want to share a few prompts with you that you can use to get started with your new journaling routine. If you know me, you know I'm all about taking action. So I want to at least leave you with a couple of prompts that you can start using as you begin journaling. So the first prompt is, what are five beliefs I want to be true about myself? So Think about five things, five beliefs you want to be true about yourself. And as you write these beliefs out, I want you to phrase them in a way that makes them already true. So for example, let's say a belief you want to be true about yourself is that you are a multi-millionaire. So you would write, I run a multi-million dollar company. Let's say that you are struggling with waking up early and getting active. So maybe a belief you would have about yourself is that you are the type of person who, you know, gets up early and works out. Your belief would be, I am the kind of person who wakes up at 5 a.m. every day to work out. Another example could be, my heart is open to giving and receiving love. So these are just five statements, things that you want to be true about yourself. Journal those out. The next prompt that you can use is, when I think about money, the first thoughts and feelings that come up are. So as you answer this specific journal prompt, take the time to feel what comes up for you as you ask yourself this prompt. Take each feeling or thought and expand on them. Why does it make you feel that way? Why did you have that thought come in your head? What is it about money that makes you feel this way or makes you think this way? And I am a finance coach, so obviously I'm going to have a money prompt in here, but money truly kind of shapes our lives. So I think it's really important if you haven't really thought about how money impacts your thoughts and feelings, it could be good for you to spend some time here. So when I think about money, the first thoughts and feelings that come up are... The final journal prompt example that you can take away is, I am the happiest when I'm. So if you are unsure of what your goals are or what you want the future to look like, I think this journal prompt can help you pinpoint things that make you feel the happiest. And once you've identified those things, you can start connecting the dots for ways to make sure those things are always in your life. So quickly recapping, we have what are the five beliefs I want to be true about myself and writing those beliefs in a way that makes them already true. When I think about money, the first thoughts and feelings that come up are, and I am the happiest when I'm. So there you have it. I hope you are more inspired than ever to give journaling a try. It is a routine that you will never regret starting. Thank you so much for letting me be the money coach in your ear today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the City Girl Savings Podcast and you feel empowered and motivated to take the next step in the journey to your dream life. Remember, if someone like me, a millennial who loves to travel, new experiences, and iced coffees can live a life they love on a budget, you can too. 